might be a little bit too early in the season. That's it, you could get one coming. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a grey fantail. Creaky call there. Reader's Digest book of Australian birds. Um, Joe Forshaw has produced those books on parrots, right. these little birds with white rumps. Yes. A bit hard to photograph on the wing. Yes, yes, that would take some. Ah, yes, this is quite a nice spot. My name is Geoffrey Dabb. I'm a resident of Canberra and I'm a member of the bird interested community here. So let's get into this. As an outsider, I find all the terminology quite baffling. So you have some pretty strong opinions on there should be a word that covers the whole thing. Yeah, there's a term, there's a term that I rather like, which is, which is birdian. And it refers to a person, any one of these people who observe, list, tick birds, people interested in conservation, and a growing number of photographers. They are a sort of brotherhood, sisterhood, who keep in touch with one another. They compete to see who can see the most birds and the rarest birds. And of course, as with any recreation, there's extreme enthusiasts at one end and there's less interested people at the other. If you can kind of break it down into sort of uh, photographers at one end and listers, people interested in keeping lists at the other. And if you're a serious lister, you would only take a photograph of a bird if it's rare, for example, to, to prove to prove that you'd seen it. Otherwise, they they tend to think that your average bird photographer does not know all that much about birds. But these are almost fundamentalist. Yes, listers. yes. That's, that's... Well, there's, there's fundamentalists everywhere. You've got fundamentalist photographers and, and fundamentalist listers, and th they d they do represent opposite extremes, certainly. So the way it sort of breaks down. If you're a resident ticker, you're interested in the birds that are round about here in Canberra, for example. Some people are up to the high 200s. If you get to 200 different birds within the ACT, you've kind of made it. Now, if you want to build up your world bird list and tick rarities and so on, back in the days when you could travel, people would take birding holidays and go overseas and increase their world list. Now, if you're doing that, all you're interested in is new birds. One piece of advice about getting into birds, I think, would be to get a good field guide. There are now many of them out there and they're excellent aids to identifying birds. You must have a pair of binoculars. Birds are quite small, have a chance of identifying some small birds. You really need to see them through a, a pair of binoculars. That's the main thing. Jeffrey, bird photography is not something you can do with an iPhone. You actually need some fairly decent gear to get a decent result. Well, some people can take photos with an iPhone. I've seen some quite good photos. This is sort of the what used to be the bread and butter lens, even before digital cameras came in. People would put a film camera on the back of one of these. I'm just going to snap this little thing here. Now that's a... a yeah, now that's what we call that's what we call a a new Holland honey eater. There it is, it's gone up. There you are. Now you should get a shot that shows you that. You can see you can see a white iris there yeah. around the eye. It's got a little bit of a, a tuft coming down from the bill that yeah. we call the malar tuft, and it's got a fan here. So Guardian every year runs Bird of yes. the Year and we, we take votes on it. What's your Bird of the Year? Well, it kind of needs to be a bit topical, doesn't it? Uh, and I can't help noticing that the bin chicken is coming back into prominence. We've got a bit of a name problem here. 
It's, it's called an Australian white ibis. We get a few of them here. They're in big numbers down at one of the landfills in, uh, down, near, down near Red Hill. And you see them flying over, um, commuting from there to other places. And here's this wonderful V formation of white birds against a blue sky. And I think that's quite Canberra. I think that would get my vote. I can't help noting that when Brisbane Gold Coast was awarded the Olympics, they were very quick to suggest for a mascot the Ben Chicken. I think it'll have a following there.